Hey guys, welcome to the VFX Show, the show on the internet that teaches you how to do visual effects for your next film. Today we're going to be learning about sky replacements uh, and how to do them in After Effects. So let's talk about sky replacements. A sky replacement is when you replace, you know, your original sky with a different sky. Uh, duh, you know, with compositing. It can change the entire mood of your scene, something like this, kind of dry and something like that, or to a more romantic, you know, Forrest Gumpian type, <laughs> Forrest Gumpian type scene. Um, it uh, is a story-driven effect that usually, if done well, qualifies as an invisible effect. Its main goal is to add moon to the film. Um, so it's basically an effect that you shouldn't notice that is an effect. Uh, it's one of the best tools for indie filmmaking to add mood and atmosphere to the story. So let's head on over to After Effects and see how we can actually replace a sky. So here is our first shot. This is the first shot that I'm going to teach you how to do. I'm going to show you a few different scenarios on how to uh, replace a sky. So here we have a shot that I filmed. And the sky is, it's not that interesting. It's kind of flat and it doesn't really have that much dynamics to it. But if you notice, this shot is static, meaning the camera isn't moving and nothing really obstructs it uh, like a character doesn't obstruct it. So this is actually the easiest one to do. So let's show you how to do that. So let's import in a cloud. And here is an image of a cloud that I actually took and then I photoshopped it to be pretty big because you can actually see where I clone stamp stuff. But this is an actual cloud shot that I, you know, took. So it was actually of that day where I found a more dynamic sky. And so it's going to fit into the scene a little better. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, scale this up and we're going to find an interesting placement for this. And so that's pretty good. And we're going to take the, the uh, bottom layer and duplicate it, control D and put it above the image. Now I'm going to use uh, the masking tool to mask out basically a rough outline of the place where we just want the sky. I'm going to add an effect to this called Extract. Extract is a pretty clever little tool. It's basically if you push these little dials backwards, it will remove the highlights of your image and vice versa with the other side, it will take away the darks. But we want to take away the light parts. I'm going to duplicate this again. And I'm going to mask out this area here. OK, and I'm going to subtract that mask, just like so. Now. If I solo this layer, you can see what I'm doing. Um, and then here, this layer at the bottom, I'm going to turn off this extract. And I'm going to say this here. I'm also going to delete this mask here. I'm going to say this part right here has no clouds now. There we go. And I'm going to say that is, you know, where no cloud should go. I'm also going to, with this mask, just do this just to make everything much easier for later use. I'm just going to take a whole mask like this. This part right here is just to make sure that we know this will not have any bleeding of clouds going through uh, when we add the key in later, like here. So now we'll do this like so. And as you can see, it's like cutting off right there. So this is what I'm going to do in the mask layer. So now we can start adjusting this to the trees a little bit better. As you can see, now we have just like a little dark spot there and we can put our cloud there. So I'm going to unsolo these. And there we go. Now there is like a little masking issue here, so let me fix that. Okay, that's pretty okay. Uh, okay, it's, you know, it's working, but you have to do a few more things to make sure it blends in a little better. So I'm gonna add alleles, uh, levels, to um, 
the clouds to make it fit a little bit better. So I'm basically taking the input black and taking it down just a few notches just to make it a little more flat. I can still crush these blacks a little bit and add some contrast, but I'm still going to add some of that white to the background. So let's now move over to the nodal pan shot. So the nodal pan is just me, you know, moving up, you know, so to reveal a sky. So the easiest way to do this, for this shot at least, is just to go into uh, track and stabilize and track camera. Okay, great, it's done. Um, now what we can do is just hit create camera and now we have a camera created and we can throw in the shot we want um, so we're going to make it a 3d layer and then when we do so it should be tracked to the scene would you look at that now we can see the we gotta scale it up a little bit but so far so good okay it should be tracked perfectly fine now, so we're just going to do that same thing where we're going to duplicate over the layer and hit extract like so. And we're going to take out these little bright spots. And I'm just going to worry about the sky and not really worry about this bottom part because we'll solve that in a second. Now, there are some really gross looking things here. And to really get those going away, we'll have to like delete everything. And which we could do and it would probably be fine, but I think we're going to leave it like that for now. We're going to deal with that later and start working on how it's bleeding into the house. So we're going to add a, um, any color solid. It doesn't matter. We'll make it green because it's my dad's favorite color and we'll make it a 3d image like so and we're going to put it over the house here I'm gonna scale it up to about there I'm gonna turn it off and now we're going to do the same thing we did with the other thing is where we're show we're saying this is the finite you know this is the thing that we want to be not a sky you know this is the thing that is not a sky right here perfect um, moving up the ladder and it actually sticks it should be perfectly aligned the entire time it might go off a little bit but should be fine um, actually the thing is the roof is pretty fine because it's kind of dark. It's just these light spots. So let's actually just do that for right now. So you can turn on the green for right now. Okay, so we're going to take that image, duplicate it, delete the extract, take the toggle switches and modes, and then alpha mat it to the green. And as you can see now, if we hide that, it's showing that it's pretty cool it's just a way so we don't have to like animate the mask path we can just do it automatically so as you can see it's looking pretty gross but everything is tracked to the shot and that's basically half the battle so take refine soft mat and refine soft mat's pretty good but it sometimes does this because it's calculating the edge details which is fine but it's also not fine. So let's feather it out a little bit. This is kind of working, kind of not. And it's probably because the it's just not wanting to calculate this. And we have these edges that are light, but the sky behind it is dark. And I can actually show you this image probably is not going to work that well. 
we can actually, if I use that same image from over here, we can actually take this image and it fits in much better just because it's a bright sky and it's mixing in with this. Now, yes, it is kind of choppy a little bit, but that can actually be easily fixed like so. And see, this image works a lot better uh, rather than that image just because it has these dark clouds. Now, a way to keep it is maybe messing with the rotation of the shot. Ooh, 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 ooh. Maybe using the bright spots around that edge instead of vice versa. So there's ways to get around it, but again, if you have trees like this, this these trees are the worst when it comes to sky replacements. They're your biggest enemy when it comes to it because it's going to be impossible to mask out every single branch. And so you'll have to use the sky as a green screen or a luminance mat. So you have to keep in mind all of these things when you're filming and you know you're going to put a sky replacement in there. You don't have to put a sky replacement in every shot, but there are some shots like I'm about to show you that are practically impossible to achieve. So here's a shot that I shot. And basically, there's no tracking points. There's nothing to show that the sky is moving, but you see the sky in the background. So it's practically impossible to have a sky replacement for this shot uh, because there's nothing to track against because there's no way of telling where my camera is in 3D space. There's no way of telling. But it's not saying it is impossible because you can do something called hand animating. I took a color range instead of a luminance mat and I basically color keyed them out. And you can use key light, but I like color range worked a little bit better for this particular shot. And if I unsolo this, what I did was I took that image and I kind of hand animated it. Now, it doesn't fit amazingly well, but it, it kind of works. And if for here, you can actually see that the, the sky is bleeding in, you would have to hand mask this. You would have to take, you know, your shot, duplicate it, delete your color range, Actually, duplicating it almost fixed it. There's shots like these where if you use an extract, and let me show you, if you use an extract on there and get the sky out, it might take away some of your character, so you will have to duplicate your layer, or duplicate your layer, delete the extract, and then mask it out. Um... That's just what you have to do, and then quickly, you know, go with the the movements of the character. That's just what you're going to have to do. See, sky replacement shots are usually dictated for a wide, and it gets harder and harder when you get into close-ups and you get into shots like these that are, like, showing the sky. So you have to be aware of what you're filming to make the best out of your shot because you can't really like if you want to have a cloudy shot but it's you know bright daylight outside it's probably gonna you're probably gonna have a tough time putting clouds in your shot like these but since it was already overcast this shot works see this shot works with that sky but not this guy so you just have to be aware of the limitations of the effect Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you want to subscribe, please do that. Uh, and uh, I'll try to post more often. But uh, being in college and stuff, it's kind of hard to do the effects and stuff. So peace out, Home Scout.